what is reparations? Reparations is the extension of its root word, repair. The word repair is the fixing of damages caused. There are many theories of reparations, many ideas, and of course, many objections. But in order to make a solid case for reparations, we must first lay out the factual contentions. This term is a legal term used in the civil court system when trying to find a bipartisan basis to lay out facts of the case that both parties can agree to. Regardless of their opposite positions, there are some fundamental factual contentions that neither party can deny. And with those factual contentions, you build upward mobility from that point of context. In the case of reparations, there are some facts that nobody can deny. And those facts are laid out throughout history. America caused blacks who descended from American slaves an extreme damaging so now that we have factual contentions based on that element, then the only debate that should get discussed is the position of repairing that damage. You either believe that America has an obligation to repair the damage that it caused blacks who descended from American slaves, or you do not. If a person believes the latter, then there is no need to engage in any more conversation. That person just admitted that he or she endorses inhumanity, racism, and completely evil debauchery. And they just lost all credibility for any type of rational human discussion. But if they at least say that they agree to the repairing of damage created against us, then the only discussion that should exchange itself is the discussion of options in repairing that damage. You already saved yourself an entire spectacle of useless and wasteful conversation that will only lead to unnecessary conflict with the person who is not worth your time. In order to have a very constructive conversation, from my experience, you will be undefeated with this. First, showing that you understand reparations and how it relates to blacks who descended from American slaves. You must first identify who must get repaired. And understanding how governments work in detailing something like reparations and understanding that reparations must get dispersed to the group of people who were affected by that particular government. And by understanding that if every single black group who descended from the slave trade in the entire diaspora took their claims to their own government would create a stronger movement for the fight for reparations because it will finally become worldwide. I live in the United States and there is a, a specific repairing that must get architected in relations to the makeup of this country. America is responsible for the damage that it caused the people who descended from it. And punitive damages must get compensated. However, we must identify who gets the compensation to reduce confusion and illegitimate legal practices. America can only pay back the black people who they owe compensation, not because we do not support other black people who, the, who were victims of the diaspora around the world, but because if this reparations movement have any chance of becoming successful, then it must have a correct position of operation. And it becomes stronger if everybody took on their own governments, which would not only develop a worldwide movement, but prevent the fallacy of the claim. How can you legitimately ask compensation from a country who can make a strong argument that they are not responsible for your damage? There must become stronger classifications of black people in America, not because we are pushing division amongst other black people in America, but because we simply want to refine our claim by making it as strong as possible. And all black people should be united in the forms of different classifications. This is not a divided fight, but a unified fight for a common goal. To make sure that blacks around the world get compensated for the damage that were created. And to make sure that every nation responsible for the slave trade get called out for accountability. And the classification blacks who descended from American slaves 
should be the only classification because it specified the type of people and the type of slavery that we descended from. Black people and American slavery. We specify black people as the type of people because the black classification is our claim to damages because our oppression was delegated to us because we were classified as black. So, like I said before, it is a claim to damages. In any classification that does not have the black classification is incomplete at best, deceitful at worst. There was an entire hierarchy system created on racial lines. And the separation of beneficiary Americanization bestowed this hierarchy, leaving anybody classified as black to stay as a permanent underclass, falling at the mercy of the white dominant class. We specify black because without specifying that we are black people, weakens our case. Because the separation of beneficiary Americanization between blacks and whites victimized black people. And it was created to build up the framework of America and being black solidified our status as a bottom exploited class in that framework that left us vulnerable to the most inhumane abuses in the history of mankind. We also specified the type of slavery, American slavery. We specified this type of slavery because there are other countries that were part of the slave trade so by stating that we are blacks who descended from American slaves only specify one group of black people who descended from a very specific form of slavery, American slavery. You can use the four elements of reparations with any group of black people who descended from any type of slavery. But I only calculated these four to represent re reparations as an American citizen. Other blacks who descended from the slave trade that occurred in their country must calculate how, DM, how DMLG, which stands for Defense Money, Land, and Grants, will get calculated in their own country. I consider it disrespectful to try to figure out their reparations as an American citizen. Black people must show support for the worldwide reparations movement and must show respect to other black groups. I formulated this DMLG reparations package by understanding the four elements of American society, which are defensive structure, capital, land, and having the access to capital. I used to only say access until I found out the specifics of having that access because the last element is, is simply just that, and that is to have access to American structure and in order to have access to American infrastructure, then you must have access to capital. When the Constitution was first established, it only allowed people who are classified as white that access. But the 14th Amendment would give that access to former slaves and their descendants. But these four elements are used to keep blacks who descended from American slaves in a bottom caste position, which is a violation of constitutional law. So if reparations get distributed, then it must get distributed with the acknowledged accountability of these four elements in relations to repairing the damage that these four elements rendered against us. The first element of defensive structure is composed of having a military, having law enforcement and having a judicial system. This is a forefront element because you cannot have anything if you cannot protect and secure it. And the United States of America understand this element with great volume. And most of the federal budget is allocated towards the military. Whichever territory has the strongest military will control the resources of the world. And building the strongest military consists of extreme competitiveness in regards to how nations interact with each other. The strength of your the strength of your the strength of your military can hold the difference between you being able to keep your citizens safe and well resourced, or being the slaves of a territory with a much more advanced one. The military is supposed to protect the rights of its citizens and protect the international interest of its territory, but a military can also be used to infringe on the rights of others internationally and domestically. And the military has been used to uphold 
the strength of white supremacy in America. And it, and it has not been used to uphold justice and equal protection amongst its, amongst its citizens. Another subcategory of defensive structure is law enforcement. Law enforcement in America represents international, federal, state, and local agencies with the purpose of enforcing the laws of the territory. Blacks who descended from American slaves have been victimized by law enforcement ever since the, ever since the creation of the slave catchers who were deputized to catch illegal runaways who risked their lives to escape the cruel bondage of their overseers all the way up to the police genocidal killing sprees against black people in America. Law enforcement have been used as an armed force to keep blacks in their place as bottom caste citizens. And last but not least, the final subcategory of the defensive structure is the judicial system. Laws are created to establish the rules of a territory in order to locate and expose people who are the undesirables and, and threats to the agendas of the territory. And the judicial system is used to legally funnel people out by excavating those people out of the system. And this judicial system has been disproportionately using its jurisprudence capabilities to funnel out blacks who descended from American slaves. Studies show that blacks and whites commit crimes at the same rate. But when it is time to prosecute, the decision to put someone away is disproportionately aimed at black people. In order to solve this problem, then there has to get enabled a repairing of damage to this situation and this repairing will get backed by the 14th amendment i guess you can call this piece of constitutional binding the root framework for our mem memorandum of points and authorities that's right our memorandum of points and authorities because there is an equal protection clause in the 14th amendment before the before the 14th Amendment, the Constitution did not apply to black people and their descendants. The 14th Amendment solidified equal protection of all rights created for American citizens to become jointed with blacks who were slaves and their descendants. There had to get created a specific amendment for blacks who descended from American slaves because we were excluded. So since there had to get created a specific constitutional binding that would include us, then there has to get created specific enforcement of that binding. Our enforcement has to be exclusive because the 14th Amendment is exclusive and it only makes sense considering that there is evidence that shows that, that the defensive structure of the United States of America does not uphold equal protection of the law in relations to blacks who descended from American slaves. So there has to get created an exclusive defensive structure for us since it is proven that we are excluded. White America has failed with proving that they are capable of doing the right thing and has proven that they are extremely unethical with upholding this equal protection clause. So the 14th Amendment is only a piece of paper if the enforcement of it does not exist. And the reason this enforcement is absent is because the defensive structure is completely controlled by white America. In order to make our protection equal, then there has to get equal distribution of defensive resources that we control. So if there is a military in America, then there has to get created another American military that we control. If there is law enforcement in America, then there has to get created new branches of law enforcement that we control. If there is a judicial system in America, then there has to get created another American, ju ju um, another American judicial system that we control. Rather, we create more appellate courts controlled by us that will look over cases litigating with blacks who descended from American slaves or create an exclusive court system that we control with exclusive jurisdiction over us, taking jurisdiction from all of the other courts. This will be reparations in the defensive department. 
the Navy SEALs with a branch of military signed into law by John F. Kennedy after the U.S. intelligence realized that it must create a stronger coverted, coverted military presence coming off of coastal shorelines. The FBI was a law enforcement agency created by, rather the, by President Theodore Roosevelt because of the fear of domestic anarchy. And as president, I will appoint numerous of judges from our own lineage who share the same vision of equal protection and upholding the 14th Amendment by enforcing judicial priorities around it. I will also propose to Congress another amendment allowing an exclusive court system for blacks who descended from American slaves that would either give exclusive jurisdiction over us or create an appellate court that specifies with the overseeing of lower courts decisions that may rule incorrectly against us. This type of legislation would need Congress members who support our agenda. And that is why anybody who does not advocate in supporting our own candidates on every level of political structure is either lying to you or completely misinformed about how politics work and how white supremacy plays a potent role in how, in how it works. Because the majority white Congress, no matter liberal or conservative, would not ever pass such of an amendment. The second element of American society is capital. The flow of currency is important for any economy and money is the second element of my reparations package. Prosperity Now is an institution that conducted research on black people's ability to create income and made a prediction that the average black household income would become zero dollars by the year 2053. The punitive damages from slavery, Jim Crow, mass incarceration, redlining, gentrification, mass unemployment, and everything else that disproportionately affect us has made us into a bottom caste financially. So there must get created some repairing of the damages that will make us into a permanent homeless panhandling class by 2053. There has to get distributed two checks. One check is a lump sum of money and the other is a check dispersed every year as long as America exists. Because we built this nation and as long as this nation exists, there should be payouts and compensation because of it. F from the year of 1865, which is the first year of the ending of the Civil War, which was the war that would permanently put an end to chattel slavery in the U.S. up until today shows America's worth of total of a total gross domestic product of over one quadrillion dollars. That is equivalent of taking the overall wealth of Bill Gates and multiplying Bill Gates 10,000 times. Now, if you equate one quadrillion dollars to the population size of blacks who descended from American slaves, you will come up with an, with an at least factor because we do not know the exact percentile of blacks who descended from American slaves because there were never any because there were never any census conducted for this. However, there were census calculating blacks altogether and that is roughly 14% of 300 million Americans. The at least factor should equate to a minimum percentile that everybody can agree to with having an at least factor of 3%. So I calculated the at least factor of 3%. 3% 3 of 300 million Americans would equate to having at least 10 million Americans who are blacks who descended from American slaves. 3% of one quadrillion dollars is $30 trillion. So at least $30 trillion must get distributed to us in a lump sum. 30 trillion divided by 10 million people means that every black person who descended from American slaves must receive a lump sum of at least $3.1 million and climbing every year. This check may have to get distributed in increments until it is paid off, but this check will eventually stop. The ongoing check is added up differently. This check will take the annual gross domestic product, GDP, of $20 trillion a year 
and using the at least factor of 3% and 10 million people, which equals at least $600 billion distributed to at least 10 million people, which equals every black person who descended from American slaves to receive at least $60,000 per year with equity due to inflation. This check will fluctuate, but have an upward mo this check will fluctuate, but have an upward mobility continuum, just like the stock market and real estate market. Inflation brings the work inflation brings the worth of the dollar down every year. So so this check will rise in equity in relation to the value of the dollar. That means in one hundred years when the worth of the dollar may have diminished so much that it would be like holding a penny instead this check would not have the same worth which will make it less valuable it will only increase in value two types of checks distributed one check is a lump sum while the other is paid to us as long as america exists the third element is land every nation must possess land because a nation without land is a nation without a territory there must be territory in order to reside, and a lot of our land was stripped from us through white terrorism. I recommend reading the book Sundown Towns, which gives description of territories stripped from blacks who descended from American slaves after the Reconstruction period by using brutal force. This force consisted of lynchings, murders, the burning downs of businesses and homes, and using white mobs to savage the progress of black Americans and then using legislation to solidify the results of it. And, and gentrification, which is going on till today, using unattainable economics, using unattainable economics to move blacks out of their neighborhoods. Not only that, but we were promised 40 acres. So if you multiply 40 acres with the at least factor of 10 million people, you would get at least 400 million acres of land given to blacks who descended from American slaves. This is, is a land mass larger than every state in the Union. It is equivalent to over twice the size of Texas. The last element is having access to capital. In order to stay functional in an economy, people must have access to a flowing economy. And we were stripped from that access. There are seven ways to access America's economy and the seven ways are labor, financial investments, loans, grants, litigation, and financial inheritances. The first six are all denied to us, which does not allow the seventh one, financial inheritances to get passed down, which creates inequality in an economic infrastructure that requires people to have access. My grants proposal, which is the last element of my reparations package, will create the type of access needed in order to build the infrastructure required to keep an economy flowing within ourselves since we are denied access to the right to the white private sectors and any type of funding necessary to sustain a high quality American life. And now even key pieces of legislation that protected us when conducting business with the white establishment has been nullified by the Supreme Court, like the Civil Rights Act of 1866. The Byron Allen racial discrimination case is evidence of how white supremacy works in America. We were chosen to be at the very bottom of the status quo, economically, politically, and socially. And this separation of beneficiary Americanization between blacks and whites is co-signed from the very top. Just like in Byron Allen's case, white supremacy will break their own rules and laws to maintain that order. It is an order that demands for somebody to be at the bottom. And that is a position that we were chosen for. My DMLG package is a reparations package that details reparations with precision and it deserves to be considered by us and for us. 
we cannot rely on the Democratic or Republican parties to do the right thing. We have to grassroots our own political representation in every area of politics. I first ran in the 2016 election with reparations at an and a black agenda at the forefront of my campaign and I'm running again. I have not dropped out and I am a registered presidential candidate documented with the Federal Elections Commission. I'm running as a Democrat only because it is a two-party system, but I am an independent candidate who is using the who is using the Democratic Party to further my campaign. You will be able to write my name in November. I'm a write-in candidate. So show the Democratic Party that you believe in supporting a reparations package candidate and that you will not allow them to scare you with Donald Trump. Let your vote represent a revolutionary style of voting that we have never experienced before in our entire generation. And neither our parents, grandparents, or great-grandparents. Write in Dion D. Jenkins. So by 2024, they would know that we mean business and would take and they would take us more seriously. So when I run again in 2024, I would have a better shot at being included in debates and town hall meetings. And we can have a represent and we can have representation running for the highest position in the land on a more serious level. Many of you were told to wait on the Democratic Party and that has failed. You must grassroots your own candidates and this is how you do it. Let us not hope that the Democratic Party get it right by 2024 because you will only fester a Joe Biden to take the nomination. We must show them that we have a candidate who we want to compete in the next election cycle. And that candidate is I, Deion D. Jenkins. This is presidential candidate Deion D. Jenkins, the only black agenda priority presidential candidate, the only reparations candidate, legitimate reparations package candidate. And I approve this message. Thanks for listening.